I'll be reading from Matthew 20, 29 through 34. And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent. But they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. <coughs> And stopping, Jesus called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus in pity touched their eyes, and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. Good morning, church. Good morning. I just uh, wanted to uh, remind you to please keep uh, Lehman Turner in your prayers. Uh, he fell a couple of weeks ago and uh, uh, cracked his, the back of his skull, and he is still recovering in Washington Regional, and he's having good days and bad days, so please keep him in your prayers. Also, uh, many people have asked about Margaret Murphy, and she's doing well at home, uh, recovering from her back surgery. Well, we continue on with our sermon series, Encounters with Christ, that healing touch. And we're looking at our Savior, the perfecter, the author of our faith. And we're looking at how people reacted to Christ and how Christ treated other people. So we might know how to, to act and so we might know how to react to Christ in our life. And this morning, we're studying a, a, a story about a man who was healed from blindness. And there's two sides of this coin. There's two sides of this story, Butch. And one is the story about why did the man cry out? And the other story is why in the world would the followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, push this man back, David, and tell him to be silent? First, let's look at why cry out. If you were a blind man and Jesus was coming into your town, why might you cry out to the Lord? Well, first, you might cry out because you know your condition. Something is missing in your life. You, you hear people talking about light and color and you know that they have this in their life. And, and sometimes you hear people laughing before any words are said. And so you know there's something missing in your life. And spiritually today, we might be calling out to Christ because there's something missing in our life. We know our condition. And we know that there is something missing in our life, so we're calling out to Christ to fulfill that gap, to, to fill that missing something in our life. Number two, I might cry out because I have nothing to lose. I might be so far from feeling wanted, I might feel unwanted, unworthy, unattracted. And when I say unattractive, I don't mean physically unattractive. By the way, Gordon, you're always six foot two in my mind and look like Tom Selleck. Just like I'm six foot four, look like Brad Pitt. No, no, not in my dreams, in Anna's dreams. And I know because that poster hung behind the door in our bedroom with his full-size poster of Brad Pitt reminds me. No. I might be crying out because I have nothing to lose. I feel unworthy. I feel unvalued, unloved. I'm looking for purpose. I'm looking for value. I'm looking for a place to belong. Can I tell you, 
To be in the body of Christ is the most wonderful thing. You know why? Because you always belong. At work, you have to perform to belong. At, at, at socially, you got to be kind of funny or hip or cool to belong. Are you part of a social club based upon intelligence? Maybe you're a part of a, of a sporting team because of your athletic ability. In the body of Christ, you're accepted in your love because you're a child of God. That's it. You belong. Number three, maybe I cry out because I have hope in his power. This guy cries out for healing, for mercy, son of David. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Somewhere along the way in this guy's life, he's heard about Jesus. He's heard the stories of Jesus. He's putting his hope in this Savior. He knows what Isaiah 35, 6, and 5 says. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like deer and the tongue of the mule sing for joy. I got to tell you, that gives me great hope when I sing. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. You see, he knew the son of David was going to be the Messiah. And he believed the prophecies that his eyes could be opened. So he's placing his hope in Jesus Christ. This morning, are we putting our hope in Christ? Have we heard the story? Do we believe and are we calling out to Christ because we have hope for what he can do for us? The next question this morning is, why tell them to be silent? This is, this is the other side of the coin of this story. One is, why in the world would you cry out? The other is, why would the followers of Christ tell him to be quiet? Now, <clears throat> I've been encouraged by the eldership to speak about evangelism and about discipling people. And so we're supposed to be discipling people so they can be disciples, so they can disciple people, right? And this has all the stench of just the, ap the absolute opposite of this. So this is some of the barriers, I think, that we have in discipling people for Christ. So I want you to pay attention because my guess is that if you showed up this morning and I know your face because I've seen you before, you probably don't have a problem with crying out for Christ. That's probably part of, of who you are. But the question is, why do we tell people to be silent? Why do we push people back? And here's some ideas that Pat and I came up on Tuesday morning. One is, I tell them to be silent because they've sinned. Now, in Jesus' day, when somebody had sinned, they received a curse. Not really, but that's what the people thought. In Jesus' day, people thought that if you were lame, it's because you sinned or your parents sinned. You did something wrong, so you received a curse. Now, we don't believe that today. Nicole, you didn't get up thinking this morning, oh, that guy's got a bum leg because he did something bad. No, what we say is, what? Oh, he's made some bad decisions, right? We tell him to be silent because he's made some bad decisions in his life. We don't come out and say, oh, he sinned. We say, oh, he's living that cursed life he's having those problems because he made some bad decisions and so we kind of push him back we tell him to be silent but I got to ask you the question who here hasn't made some bad decisions 
in their life? Has all your decisions been good? Have you always made wise decisions? Did you have to live with the consequences of those decisions? Absolutely, and we thank the Lord that he forgives us, right, from those bad decisions. Number two, I tell them to be silent because they can't be helped. I mean, really, they, they can't be helped. In Jesus' day, nobody who was born blind was ever healed. Now, in John 9, 32, this is a statement from a young man who was born blind, and the Pharisees are upset that Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. And they said, well, you're steeped in your sin, and, and, and you, were, you were cursed and Jesus is a nobody, and he he's works by the, the power of the devil. And the guy says, yeah, never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a blind man, a, a man born blind. You see, they all thought he couldn't be helped. This guy beside the road, yelling for help, yelling for the Lord to come and have mercy on him. Everybody thought there, hey, there's no way he's going to be healed. So they pushed him back. There's no reason. There's no reason for you to see the Savior. Nobody gets healed of blindness. Do we do the same today? Do we decide in our mind that that person just can't be helped. I had a friend a few years ago who told me that they didn't give money to the homeless because most of the homeless were addicted. And because they were addicted, then they didn't make good decisions with their money because they were addicted and they would just spend their money on drugs and the next high so that's why they were homeless. So until we got the problem solved with their addiction, they weren't going to help with their homelessness. Do you see why that doesn't work, why that's circular? And somewhere along the way, you've got to stop the problem. When we start telling people to be silent or we don't reach out to people because they're helpless, they can't be helped... We got the same problem they did in our story this morning. They can't see the power of Christ. They can't see Christ working in them and on them and through them. I tell them to be silent because they're undeserving of the master's attention. You see, they're, they're deadbeats. You see, they're, they're, they're pedophiles. You see, they're deadbeat dads who left their children and have never paid any alimony nor taken care of that child. And so we think in our minds, we imagine in their, our minds that they're undeserving of the master's attention. And I just got to ask you the question when you think this way. How bad do you have to be, Rick? How bad do you have to be before they're undeserving of the master's attention? I mean, because is it, is it up here with you have to be Hitler? Or maybe you have to be in federal prison? Or maybe you have to have a citation. Or maybe you just have to curse. Where along that paradigm are you? Is humanity not worthy of the attention of the master? Do you decide that? I think not. Now this is the one I think that really gets our society. 
I tell them to be silent because they're, they are creating an awkward situation. They make me feel uncomfortable. Mm. You see that guy who's hurting standing outside of Walmart with tattoos on the whole left side of his face, wearing pajamas and a wife beater and shaking because he's literally out of his mind because of the drug addiction and he wants you to be Jesus to him but you can't because he makes you feel awkward. He makes you feel uncomfortable. You know, you see that person eating alone. You see that person sitting by themselves. And they really are, Rick, socially awkward. But they're lonely. But you know if you go over there, you're going to have to participate in the awkwardness. So you don't. So you leave them there by themselves. If I serve that blind guy who's yelling, I mean, this, this, is, this is the rabbi everybody's talking about. This is the guy that everybody's hoping in. And here these blind guys are screaming out in public to have mercy on them. They're making us feel uncomfortable. Let me make you feel uncomfortable for a second. Who does Jesus ignore in the entire crowd but goes to who? These two guys who need him who are socially awkward, who are creating an awkward situation. It doesn't say anything about Jesus talking to the crowd, does it? Wonder who he's worried about. Wonder who he's concerned for. The healing touch of Christ. Never discount what God can do in your life. Never discount what hurts he can heal. Never discount what Jesus can do for you in your depression, addiction, sorrow, suffering, mental anguish, Never underestimate what he can do for someone that you've totally discounted. The healing touch of Jesus. Why don't you discount him? Because he might just save their soul. Besides that, they might just become a follower, a disciple. Immediately they recovered their sight and did what, church? Followed him. Wonder who they are. Wonder if we hear them being talked about in the New Testament. Wonder if Peter or Paul ever met them again. Wonder if they followed Jesus for days. How many people were saved? Because these two guys... They screamed, they yelled, they cried out for Jesus. Let's bow our heads and the sermon will be yours. Dear Heavenly Lord, thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for the peace that you give us. We ask, Lord, that you help us find a way to pass that peace on to others, to give them hope, to help them regenerate and revive we ask, Lord, that we be disciples that make disciples.
Help us to remember the story in the back of our mind. Every time we see someone who's awkward, who's lonely, who's different, that we might be Jesus to them, to reach out to them for a healing touch. In Jesus' name, amen.